What's going on, everybody? Welcome inside the Mayo Media Network for your Sunday Best Bets. Here with me, your host, Matt Best. Last week, pretty good, not too shabby at all. We went perfect on the shot prop, so if you parlayed them together, good for you. And over on the regular picks, went one for three. I know there was a close call in there. We'll try and bump that number up. Alrighty, before we dive into the video, a few things we need to do here. Number one, see this hat I have on my head here? If you want one, we are giving one away over at the Mayo Media Network. Just go check out any of our tweets. Each one of them has giveaway and then a link to a giveaway. We're giving out $50 right in your pocket and one of these Mayo Media Network hats. I am the only person at the network that has a hat. Yeah, even Pat Mayo doesn't have a network or a hat with his own network on it. So you want to go and do that. You also want to smash the subscribe button, hit the like button, leave a comment below on what your favorite bet is from this Sunday. And without further ado, let's dive into things. We're going to start things off with I have one, two, three, four, five plays for you and then three shot props to round things out. The first play I have for you, the Washington Nationals against the Arizona Diamondbacks. We're going to go ahead and take the Nationals money line here at minus one. 192 and basically all of these baseball plays is just me attacking high fit pitchers and we're starting off in a big way here uh this is specifically a go against madison bumgardner play here 0-2 with an 11.2 era already given up 17 runs across 13 and two-third innings that's his fip of 6.22 on the other side on the bump for the nats is steven strasburg he said one great start and one very poor start and he should be able to find up somewhere in the middle of those two starts against the deep backs team in the bottom third of batting average and on base percentage. I know the price is kind of high at minus one uh, minus 192, so go ahead and throw that into some parlays here and there. Um, and we're just going to go down in odds as this goes on, but we've got another minus 192 for you, and I know I'm just trying to keep it under 200 here on the show. We've got the Brewers against the Pittsburgh Pirates. The Brewers' money line minus 192 is what we'll be attacking here. Like I said off the top, we're going against high FIP opposing pitchers, and Chad Cool is our guy. He's not so cool. You should sue me for as bad of a pun that was. He's issued a league high 15 walks and a FIP of 8.86. Out of all the pitchers we're talking about, this FIP is the absolute highest. Uh, the Pirates are also 0-4 when Cool starts for them. Otherwise, Freddie Peralta, over his last four starts, that is. Otherwise, Freddie Peralta, on the other side, has been absolutely lights out. Uh, 0.69, nice. ERA and 13 innings of work. Give me the Brew Crew here. Uh, parlay that with the Nationals there. You should have a decent enough line to be happy with yourselves. Now we're getting lower. Mets money line minus 175 against the Colorado Rockies. Marcus Stroman looks dominant. He looks pissed off, and he looks like he's having a good time out on the mound. Still outspoken as all hell. And if you're a Toronto fan, you either loved him or hate him. There is one of the two there. Let me know in the comments. If you are a Toronto fan or a baseball fan in general, what do you think of Marcus Stroman? Are you in for how how, how outspoken he is, or are you just absolutely against that? Uh, his K numbers aren't high this year, but he's been very effective, been very efficient, has only walked two batters, 0.75 ERA and a 0.75 whip. On the other side, we have Antonio Senzatella, who does not look good this year. The complete opposite, fourth start of the season, 1-2 and two with a 7.07 ERA and a 6.21 FIP. The Mets also play strong behind Marcus Stroman. They're 6-0 and in his last six starts. The Mets offense, seventh in average, second in OBP. And they're playing at Coors. So uh, the Mets here feel like a feel-good spot. Uh, now let's talk about the Houston Astros against the Seattle Mariners. The Mariners' money line, minus 105. This should be kind of higher. <laughs> Odorizzi is starting for the Astros. Only went three and a third in his first outing and only outing of the season so far, but gave up three long balls. The Astros are hurting. No Altuve, no Bregman, no Alvarez. And then on the other side of the bump, which is why this line is kind of low here, or kind of high for the Mariners, is uh, Nick Marge Vicious. Just think of Marge from The Simpsons and think how vicious she looked when Homer shot her with the uh, makeup gun. One of the best Simpsons episodes there is. Uh, despite his 7 ERA, though, he has an ex-WOBA of 3.26. Now, you look at the league average of ex-WOBA, and it's 3.34, and Marge Vicious's uh, ex-WOBA on his team is the lowest. So... Uh, his ERA is sky high, but you want to look at things like x to kind of feel better when you lock them in at minus 105. And I've got a hockey play for you here. The New York Islanders against the Philadelphia Flyers. And when you look at this line, it's minus 135, at least as of recording right now, 1044 p.m. Eastern time on April 17th. 
Uh, by the time you listen to this, it'll be up by about 11.15 or so. The line could even move by then. I just put these lines in right now, and the line could move. I see this closing at like minus 150, minus 160 here for the Islanders. Um, the Islanders lost two to the Bruins back-to-back, -back, and that just doesn't change my mind on the aisle whatsoever. You take those two losses out, and the Isles are 5-1 and one in the month of April and 7-3 and three in their last 10. This seems like a fantastic bounce-back opportunity for this team, and they're going against the Philadelphia Flyers, who, other than the Buffalo Sabres, might be the biggest disappointment of the season, and Brian Elliott looks old. His sub-900 save percentage, I think it's .888 right now, uh, he's looked just slow, laterally in every sense of the word, has just looked bad. So those are the plays for you, your money lines. We've got the Nationals, the Brewers, the Mets, the Islanders, and the Mariners. And uh, you can go ahead and play those. And let's talk about some shot props. Three for three last week on the show for shot props. And uh, we're going to go back to old reliable Alex Ovechkin here in one of the plays. Three and a half is the over for him. I said it last week. I said it again. Ovi dominates when he plays the Bruins, at least in terms of shot volume. He set the over in five of six games this season against the Bruins, averaging 5.83 shots per game against that team. I think in last week's episode, he actually had eight shots against the Bruins. So go ahead, lock him in there. Adam is part of your parlays. And we're going to go to Sidney Crosby. And it feels nice talking about Crosby when talking about Ovechkin. It's going to be a sad league when these guys are out. Crosby, two and a half over against the Buffalo Sabres. He's hit the over, that two and a half mark, in six of his last seven games. He's averaged four shots on goal each game in that span. And he missed on the 17th against the Sabres, but I'm right back in on it. I think you can go to Crosby here against the Sabres. And Jonathan Marcheseau has been an absolute darling of the fantasy hockey picks and bets show with Chris Meany on Monday, Wednesdays, Fridays. We've got Cam Stewart on Fridays. We've got Eric Young on Mondays. And we've got a rotating guest list on Wednesdays. We had Pete Jensen on last week to talk about the NHL trade deadline. You can still go back and listen to that episode and just get some details on who the real winners and losers were of that day. But man, Meany has loved Jonathan Marcheseau, and I've just been following that train, and I've uh, done a bit of homework here for myself. Over his last 10 games, the two and a half mark, Marcheseau has only missed it once. He's averaging 4.3 shots over his last 10 games, going up against the Ducks, who are bad right now, but will be good soon. Uh, I love this Marcheseau play. So we've got Crosby, Marcheseau, Alex Ovechkin, Crosby and Marchi, 2.5 are the uh, props there, and Ovi is 3.5. Now go ahead, play those bets. Let me know in the comments what your favorite bet of my picks, your picks, and we'll talk about it. And I'll be hanging out in the comments all day long because these games start as early as 1 o'clock and they're flying out through the whole day. Again, if you want your hands on one of these Mayo Media Network hats, they fit comfortably. I've got a fat head. I've got a 7 and 5 eighths head, which is abysmal. I can't wear a lot of different kind of hats because, you know, the melon's too big. But if you want one of these hats, they are so comfortable. And uh, all you need to do is just sign up for the giveaway. It's so simple. A few clicks. If you follow myself, Pat and Paul on Twitter, you're already entered. You just need to verify it there. Sub to the Fantasy Hockey Picks and Bets show. Sub to all the different networks. But make sure you do it through that link that I'm talking about. I'll make sure it's part of every single tweet. And if you're an audio listener and can't see the hat, just go on Mayo Media Network's Twitter and you will see this nice hat here. I take it off, but my hair looks like absolute shit. And with that, we'll see you next Sunday.